We've all been there before. We have our beloved phone and it just won't charge. Is it the charging port? Could it possibly be the power adapter? Or maybe it's the cable, right? Do you have a power bank that you take on the go, maybe camping or when you're at Magic Mountain or Disneyland or somewhere like that, and you're wondering if the charging port is delivering like it should, or maybe the onboard battery has diminished over time. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you what to purchase and how you can test all of these scenarios. During the intro, you probably noticed this bag here. Well, this bag is the KJ KJI USB digital tester. I picked this up on Amazon for $23.99. Let's open it up and get started. USB digital tester. Here's the model number KJ KJ1. Here you have it says smart chip, high speed transmission, professional safety guard, and world standard. Over here, if I can get it to show, because there's some letters underneath, it says science and technology change life. I believe that. On the back, of course, warranty policy, 30 days refund, one year warranty with replacement, wall plug replacement for life, 100% customer satisfaction, 24 hours email support with an email address that you can use to contact someone, and KJ, KJI USB-C tester can monitor voltage, current, capacity, electric quantity, power, load impedance, D plus and D minus voltage and other data of device. And then here you have made in China. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's get a knife to open this up. First thing I'm gonna pull out is the instruction manual. It's kind of shiny, so I'm gonna try and keep the glare down, but you have the tester latest button functions, press one, click to switch the display interface, so on and so forth, special reminders, examples of the screens, the device, the adapter, how to go over the functions. I'm gonna go over all this separately. Uh, test charging speed and quality of USB cable, test capacity and electric energy of power bank, test capacity and electric energy of phone, 8 amp high current input, test charger, fast charging. And then you have all the fast charging protocols and the voltages and the D plus, D minus and all that. We'll go over this later. The next thing I'm gonna pull out of here would be the low discharge device. This is if you wanna test like a power adapter and you plug this in and it'll create a constant load. Might as well open it up. And there you go. So this switch will put a one amp load. This switch will put a two amp load. You put them both on, it puts up to a three amp load on whatever power adapter you're trying to test. So there's that. This appears to be a USB-C coupler. And that's exactly what this is. You have USB-C. USB-C, so there's a coupler. And then that's it for the, the bag here. Open this guy up. As you can see here, this is a USB micro and it plugs into the micro port of the tester. And what that does is it enables the fast charging protocol to work with type C. According to the instruction manual, you have to have this plugged in here in order to use USB fast charging or to detect it. Now that we have the tester and we have the load discharge device and we have the USB-C coupler and the on-the-go adapter, let's go ahead and put this to use. As you can see, along with the USB tester, I have several power adapters and some cables. I'm gonna use this extension cord for a power source. I'm sure you notice that there's the number eight on here. That just tells me that it's an eight foot long cable. I mark all my cables. Now I think it's important to go over the tester, how it works before actually doing any testing. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab a power adapter and I'm gonna plug it into my power source. Then if you notice, this is USB-A. 
So we're gonna go USB A input on the USB tester, excuse me, pop that in. You'll hear a beep and then you'll see this welcome screen or I call it the home screen. Now, according to the manual, you can click the button once to switch to the display interface or you can fast click it two times or three times, all the way up to five times and it'll do something different. Usually it clears a certain value. We'll go over all of this later on in the video. You'll understand why in just a bit. There are a total of nine pages, seven displayed test results, and one is for settings and one is to turn the display off completely. You press the display button to cycle through the pages, just like this. Each test page will show the results in a different format. Some pages show more information than others, just depends on what type of test results you're interested in. What I like about this USB tester is it provides you with a lot of information. Starting in the upper left corner, you get your voltage. And across from that, you have your amperage. And then of course, according to Ohm's law, voltage times amps will give you watts. Below that, you have watt hours, you have the internal temperature of the tester, and you have the time that the tester has been running. Underneath the amps, you have ohms, next to the omega symbol for ohms, and then you have milliamp hours, and then you have your group number. In this case, it's group number one. Clicking once on the display button will bring up your second page or interface. And this page is pretty much the same as the first one, except voltage is now broken down into positive and negative, and then you have your data lines, positive and negative. You can also see which charging protocol that this adapter, power adapter is using. And this one is SCP for supercharged protocol. And then you have VOOC, which is voltage open loop, multi-step constant current charging. I think we should just stick with VOOC. Maybe these protocols aren't important to you. And all you wanna know is your voltage, your amps, and your watts but it's nice to have this information if you want it. Make note that there is a color scheme. For example, volts is always yellow and amperage is always green and watts is always red and so on and so forth. Page three has much of the same information as page two, except it's displayed in Chinese. Nothing wrong with Chinese, but I certainly can't read it. So I'll press the display button to advance to page four where the words are in English. Starting from the upper left corner, you have volts, power in watts, you have your energy, which is watt hours, capacity, which is in milliamp hours, which is why you hear cell phone batteries have so many milliamp hours, where that's the capacity of the battery. You have the time that this tester has been running again, you have the current, you have the ohms again, you have the CPU internal temperature of the tester, and here you have the internal temperature of the tester in Fahrenheit, if you wanna use Celsius or Fahrenheit, and then your group number again. Now, interface page five is kind of my favorite. Why? Because most of the time you're gonna to wanna to know your volts, your amps, and your watts, and that's pretty much what you're gonna to wanna to know, and on this particular page, those numbers are nice and big. You also have your milliamp hours, which are large, and you have your watt hours, which are also larger than the other interfaces. I think this is the one most people will use. Clicking right along, we get to page six. And you're probably wondering, well, what's, what's going on here? This looks like an EKG or something in a hospital. What this actually is, is a graph of your volts and your amps. The volts are in yellow, the amps are in a greenish bluish color, to the far left, top and bottom numbers indicate the range. So from five volts to 5.2 volts, and the yellow line indicates the charging voltage as well as its stability. To the right, you have the same thing. You have 0, 0.00 amps to 0.10 amps, and then the blue line is the indicator for the stability of it and what your current amperage is. Interface page seven. This page is essentially the same as page six, 
Only the information displayed is for the data voltages. The left is for data plus and the right is for data negative. There must be a signal on both of these lines in order for data to be transferred. The higher the voltage, the higher the data rate. Here we have system settings, long press to enter. First thing it's going to show is over voltage protection, long press again. The value will start to blink. Now if you press the display button once, it will decrease the value. Long pressing after that will cause it to rapidly decrease. If you want to increase, double press the display button, hold it down, and it will rapidly increase. And then you can adjust it back to where it was. Now, if you leave it alone long enough, four or five seconds, you'll see the word OK, and then it'll move on to the next value. There's a total of nine. There's low voltage protection, over current protection, and then there's screen rotation. Screen rotation, you long press, and it will flip the display 180 degrees. Long press again, back to the way it was. Number five will be your default settings. If you long press this, it will default set all of your settings. If you want to clear all the data from all the test results, you long press that. And again, OK, it will clear all your data. Number seven is standby style. You have original and you have VAW, which stands for volts, amps, and watts. Now what that means is, if you put this on original, when this times out and goes back to the home screen, your standby will be in this format, original. Now if we change this to volts, amps, and watts, right here, we see volts, amps, and watts. When this thing, when the tester rather, times out, it'll go back to a different interface which will show volts, amps, and watts. It takes about 12 seconds. Okay, and there you go. V a W for volts, amps, and watts. Number eight, this is capacity ratio, and I'm gonna highlight it just so it doesn't go away right away. And it decreases with one press, and it increases with a double tap, just like for volts, amps, and watts. But what this does is it's an automatic ratio adjuster so that when you do a test for power banks and you have to multiply the voltage times uh, a ratio, this is what you can automatically set it to so you don't have to do the math. And here we have exit. You can long press exit like this and get out immediately or it will go back to the home screen on its own. So the exit button is just a faster way to get back to the home screen. The last interface is page nine. As soon as I press the display button, it's going to start a countdown. Three, two, one, the display will go off. Then you will long press the blank screen and hold it down and you'll get this secret menu. The reference voltage, no load reset, reference amperage, and the minimum amperage. You can select either one of these and then just long press and it'll say okay. Here you can reset all the values like that. And then to exit, long press exit. That is all the interfaces and features and functions of the tester. The one thing I wish was different was I wish that the font here was a little bit bigger, which again is why I like page number five, because the values are nice and big. Now that we've gone over how to use the tester, let's put it to use. I still have the infamous original iPhone power adapter plugged in, so let's just go with that for now. This particular adapter is model number A1385 and is capable of putting out five volts up to one amp. Knowing this information is crucial to testing power adapters because you need it to compare what the tester shows. All right, so the USB tester shows 5.11 volts and 0.02 amps for a total of 0.11 watts. That's because there's no load on the output side. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to use it to place a load onto the adapter. Now this top one is for one amp and the bottom one is for two amps. And if you push them both over, of course you get three amps. 
just keep note that these get extremely hot and you can burn yourself. I mean, they get really, really hot. We're gonna plug this in. As you can see, hopefully on camera, if I turn it to the side a little bit, there's a red LED light that comes on to indicate that this unit is working. Now what you'll notice is your volts is at 5.07 volts, 5.06, and 1.03 amps for a total of 5.22 watts. When you induce a load, when you cause a load onto the adapter, you want your voltage to not go below 3.5 volts. So at one amp, this is working just fine. I'm gonna turn off the one amp and I'm gonna apply the two amp. Flip that down. It turns off, which indicates it's overloaded. This adapter is fine at one amp. We know now that it cannot place a two amp load on here and handle it properly, but we already knew that because the spec sheet for this shows five volts, one amp. It's not supposed to be able to handle more than that. Being that this is an older iPhone charger, let's try an updated Apple power adapter and see what happens. So I'm gonna unplug the load device, unplug the tester, get rid of this guy. Now here's another, obviously much larger charger and much newer. This is Apple power adapter model number A2305. This adapter is capable of putting out five volts at three amps, which is 15 watts, or nine volts and 2.2 amps, which is 19.98 watts, or as it's advertised, 20 watts. So I'm going to plug this 20 watt adapter into my power source. Plug the USB tester into that. Here we have that welcome screen that I was talking about. Next, I'm going to plug the low discharge device into the USB A port. So we're going to plug this down here like so. And there's the red LED light. So now we're going to go ahead and place a one amp load with a one amp load and five volts holding steady, it's putting out 5.12 watts, pretty much the same as the previous adapter. But now we're gonna turn off the one amp load and apply a two amp load. Now, if you notice, the voltage dropped a little bit to 4.98, 2.19 amps, and now it's putting out 10.9 watts. So this has already doubled what the previous charger could put out and it's holding steady. Now, while no USB device that I'm aware of pulls three amps, just for kicks, let's apply both switches and see what happens. It's now putting out 4.9 volts at 3.16 amps for a total of 15.5 watts. I know what you're thinking. Didn't I just say this is a 20 watt charger? So why did it max out at 15.7 amps? Well, there are two reasons for that. One, this low discharge device is pretty primitive in design, meaning it doesn't have fast charge protocols installed like your iPhone or your Galaxy phones do. And two, you need to use a USB-C to USB-C or a USB-C to lightning cable. USB-A simply won't cut it. To demonstrate this with the exact same power adapter, I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max that I'm gonna plug into the tester using a USB-C to USB lightning cable and see what we get. We'll plug directly into the tester and then the other end will go directly into the 14 Pro Max. And as we see, it's gonna go through some changes, trying to negotiate, find out which fast charge protocol it has. And now we have it settled at 8.87 volts, 2.16 amps, which again, volts times amps gives you wattage. This is at 19 watts, 19.4, it's fluctuating a little bit, but 19.4 is close to 20 watts. There you have it. Now that's fine for adapters, but what about cables? For this test, I'm gonna plug in a Samsung USB power adapter. This is model EPTA20JWE that I've already tested to be good. Now this particular adapter is capable of providing five volts and two amps for a total of 10 watts or nine volts and 1.67 amps, which is 15 watts. I plug the 
adapter into my power source, plug the tester into the power adapter. Now I'm simply going to take this cable, plug it into the chart, uh, the tester rather, and now I want to take the USB-C in into this Note 20 Ultra. And let's see what happens. Now, I don't know about a lot of other phones, but this phone actually tells you there's something wrong with the connection. But if you have a phone that doesn't tell you this, you can tell here that this says uh, five volts, 0.47 amps for a total of two watts. We know the phone asks for at least 20 watts, and we know this is capable of putting out 15 watts. So the fact that this is only saying two means this is a bad cable. This cable here is no good. And here I have a cable, another cable, and we're just gonna go USB-A into the same power adapter, and then into the same Note 20 Ultra with the USB-C. As you can see here, you now have nine volts, 1.6 amps for a total of 14.6 watts. And as I've said earlier, this is a 15 watt charger. So this is, this phone is requesting the max it can pull from this adapter and the cable is working just fine. Do you have a power bank you've been using while camping or maybe at the beach and you're wondering if it's still holding the capacity it did when you first bought it? Can it still charge your phone or tablet? Well, I'm gonna show you how to test power banks like this Gold Zero Venture 70 I happen to have lying around. First, we need to know that the power bank can charge devices properly. A quick check on Gold Zero's website shows this particular power bank is capable of providing five volts up to 2.4 amps for a total of 12 watts max. The capacity is 17,700 milliamp hours at 3.78 volts. Now with that information, we can now use our tester to verify the manufacturer's specification. So I'm gonna turn on the power bank and then I'm gonna plug the USB tester into one of the USB ports. There's our welcome screen coming to life. Now I'm going to plug the load device into the tester. If we apply one amp, you can see here that it's at five volts, one amp for five watts total. If I go ahead and hit the switch, to apply a two amp load on here, you'll see that you have 4.88 volts, 2.14 amps for a total of 10.4 watts. Now this does put out up to 12 watts, but because this load device isn't drawing or requesting the full 2.4 from here, it's only requesting 2.13, then you're gonna get 10.4. Bump that up to 2.4 and you'd have 12 watts. Now the second test one would want to conduct would be to see if the power bank is charging to its listed capacity. As I mentioned before, this particular power bank is listed to have a capacity of 17,700 milliamp hours. Now, in order to test this, it involves a few more steps. Make sure your power bank is fully charged. Turn on the power bank. We can see here that it's fully charged and is now on. And then I'm gonna plug into the USB port. Okay, once I have the USB tester plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll until I get to the page that shows the English descriptions, which is here. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hold down the power button, and then what that's gonna do is that's gonna clear the power, the time, and the capacity. just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and use my low discharge board or device that it came with, and I'm gonna plug that in. This can hold up to a two amp charge or it can provide up to 2.4 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate two amps. Now you can see it's pulling that two amps from the power bank. All right, so now that we have this set up, just understand that this load device here is pulling two amps constantly from the power bank and it'll continue to do so until the power bank is completely depleted. It's drained entirely. The USB tester will keep track of how many milliamp hours this provided before it died, and we can check that later. The only thing you need to do now is be sure to check the voltage here to make sure whether it's five volts or nine volts. In this case, we can see it's five volts, so jot that down because you're gonna need this information later. 
Let's go ahead and let this drain and then I'll be right back. Now eventually the power bank is going to be completely discharged. Once that's done, you need to unplug the tester from the power bank and then remove the load device, set that to the side as well, and then set the tester down just long enough to grab another power adapter that you know is good. You're going to plug it into a power source and then we're going to go ahead and plug the tester into the power adapter and that's just to turn it on so we can read the value that's stored on here. Once the USB adapter is powered on, you can go here and see that the capacity is 8,363 milliamp hours. You're gonna to wanna to jot that down. Now, if we take a quick look at the user's guide or the instruction manual, it says milliamp hours is multiplied by 1.35 when discharge voltage is five volts and milliamp hours is multiplied by 2.45 when discharge voltage is nine volts. We jotted down earlier that it was five volts, so we need to multiply it by 1.35. So if you take 1.35 and you multiply it by 8,363, you get a grand total of 11,290 milliamp hours. According to the website, the specs for the Venture 70 is 17,700 milliamp hours. Now I've had this thing for a while. I've had it for years since it first came out. So it's quite possible it's lost some of its capacity. And this is how you verify and find out if your power bank is holding its charge like it should. In this case, it's lost some, it's lost about a third of its ability to hold a charge. And that's how you test a power bank. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned you could fast click the display button to clear certain values. I wanted to wait until we actually had some data to clear. If you fast click twice, it will clear the capacity like so. One, two. Beeps and capacity is now at zero. If you do it three times, you will clear power. Now, if you do it four times, that's going to clear the group timer. This four minutes and 20 seconds or four minutes and two seconds. One, two, three, four. As you can see, this is now at zero. Now, if you do it five times, this test group over here, test group number zero one, in case you had multiple test groups, that will cycle through all 10 of them. So one, two, three, four, five. If you notice, this is now on two. If you do it again, one, two, three, four, five, it goes to three, so on and so forth up to a total of 10. Now long pressing while the tester is on resets the uh, capacity, the power, and the timer all at once. You do that by long pressing. That's it. Now if you want to clear all the data from all the groups, then you need to go into settings and select clear data. Now I know some of you pay really close attention to everything. So you'll notice these two arrows going from left to right. That simply indicates that there is a load on the other side of the output, meaning the cable is connected to something. In this case, it's connected to that node 20 I mentioned earlier. Last but not least, I want to go over this OTG on the go USB micro adapter. It's mentioned in the instructions here. It says, if you want to use the tester on a USB-C device, insert the side hole of the USB tester with a small adapter to trigger the USB-C PD charging function. PD, of course, meaning power delivery. The right is the correct way to use. And then over here, they give you a diagram of how to use it. It doesn't mention whether it's for Apple or Android or anything like that. It says that if you want to test USB-C devices, you must have this installed. So what I found out is if you have an Apple power adapter and you plug this in and you plug the tester in, it works just fine. It's going to show five volts, zero amps and zero watts because there's no load on this side, but it, it's active. It's working. If you do the same thing with an Android power adapter, it won't turn on. In this case, you must use the on the go power adapter. If you plug this in, now it turns on. Will it work with Apple? Of course. So if you disconnect all of this, 
And then we're going to use the Apple power adapter and plug this in with the, with the adapter in. Still fires right up. No problem. But I will show you something I found out that's pretty odd. Say we have the Android or Samsung power adapter. And then let's say we use USB-C, it won't turn on, correct? However, if we grab an Apple product, like this USB-C to lightning cable, and you plug that in, it'll turn on. If you try the same thing with a USB-C to USB-C cable, you still get nothing. So my suggestion is, once you get this out of the package, and you get a hold of this on the go USB micro adapter, I would plug this into the tester and just leave it in there. There's no need to take it out. You could lose it. It's a very small piece. This could act as a holder and it doesn't affect uh, using the Apple power adapters. Just leave it in there. I know I said last but not least, but there is this USB-C coupler that came with it as well. But for the life of me, I don't understand why you would ever need this, what you would use it for, unless you have a, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and for whatever reason on the other end, you need to extend that cable out. Other than that, I can't find a use for this. If you can, go ahead and leave it in the comments below what you think this might be useful for. That's pretty much it for the KJ, KJI USB tester. I'm gonna leave a link to the tester along with the various power adapters I use in the video in the description below. If you like the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It will definitely help me out. If you have any rants, raves, or anything like that, leave that in the comments below and hit the notification bell for future content. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.